Coffee is one of Uganda's top earning export crop and it's on this note that farmers are all trying to add value so as for the crop to be able to fetch more money. Uganda is one of the few countries in the world that has indigenous coffee in robusta and Arabic coffee types and this gives us an edge. On the show today, we bring you an expert in the coffee value chain and a seasoned entrepreneur in the field of coffee. This business dates way back in 2014. Volcano Coffee offices are located right here in the city center and it's amazing what happens here. It goes beyond the bean. Volcano Coffee is doing an amazing job. It's one of the first ever specialty coffee company in Uganda. We are using the latest technology of third wave brewing roasting behaviors. We roast coffee from various regions of coffee growing regions in Uganda and we also support those entrepreneurs who are passionate or say those farmers who are passionate and want to go beyond the primary level of production. So we are seeing this practically. We have farmers who are ferrying their coffee to our roaster, roasting unit in Kampala as far as from Kapchorwa, Mbale, Chihihi, uh, Kisoro and West Nile parts mentioned but a few. Besides that we also have a brewing section where we serve cup coffee by cup. You come and have a latte, a cappuccino and a well specialized brewed coffee using the third wave brewing principles. Gerard carried on the love of coffee that was instilled in him at a young age as he watched his parents make a living out of coffee production. He took it a notch higher by studying the crop critically and professionally. His love is deeply rooted. I was born in a coffee growing uh, farming family. And then uh, while growing up as a young person, uh, I used to see my parents harvest coffee and then, uh, you know, uh, put it on tarpaulins, dry it, and then end up taking it to the milling stations for processes and then trade. So while, uh, while catching up with life, uh, I discovered I uh, used to pass by one of the milling stations in Kasese, and that is at Bakwani, uh, milling, uh, coffee milling station near, near Total. So I used to see women scattered, uh, seated in the verandas, you know, hand picking. So I was concerned and inter picked interest to what exactly they were doing. So after that, after a while, as a young person, uh, having de uh, also developing that, uh, you know, uh, that concern in coffee. I was brought to Kampala with it. So reaching in Kampala, my uncle in Najana Kung did, uh, you know, had a, a food a, a food restaurant and takeaway. So I, I was served, I used to serve coffee often and uh, you know cold drinks like beers, etc. So it ha I happened to be serving one of the customers who used to work at uh, Uganda Coffee Development Authority. It's where my actually the coffee career started from. So from day one, I used to go to UCDA, Uganda Coffee, and see exactly what I was seeing in Kasese. So I now begin, I began to relate it, and through it's where that story that really came up and then got developed, because it had, a, it had an origin. So from UCDA, I got uh, into, uh, I, I got trained as a coffee barista. A, a barista is a person who actually brews coffee, perfect cup of coffee in a coffee shop, a hotel, or uh, you know, uh, or, or restaurants. So I got that skill. Then I was uh, I was contacted by managing director of Cafe Pub to go and uh, you know uh, be one of the uh, support staff. Eventually, I landed into uh, one of the great hands of the coffee sector in Uganda, the late Julian Gabriel. He mentored us. He improved on our skills, and then we became better. I, I'm the first coffee barista to actually help the government of Rwanda establish itself along the supply of specialty coffee destinations. So 
After my contract with the Rwandan government, then I came back and established Volcano Coffee in 2014. So that's, you know, that's the journey I can give and the, that's how we've been going step by step to ensure that we are one of the leading coffee brands in Uganda. The principal Gerard believes in is not to leave anyone behind in the effort to push coffee production and its entire value chain. We met this special interest group here, a place they call home, uniquely placed, using coffee to improve and change these people's lives. All this is done in a bit to manage and control the quality so that we can compete favorably on the global market. We are a crop diagnostic company, largely looking at the principles of quality as a, a priority number one. What you see here, uh, these are the young people from the special, uh, special interest group uh, that work with. These people, uh, they are born the, 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 you know, uh, with the other illness attachments. They can't talk. However, we are using the commodity coffee to see that their, their lives are improved. How are they improved? We teach them to braid. After grading this coffee, we are going to take it to the roasting facility or the coffee roaster. From the roasting point, we grind and then be able to brew. What we brew, these are normal modern coffee uh, specialty beverages like cappuccino, lattes, you know, cafe mocha, etc. We are doing this using the commodity that we farm right here in Uganda. Uh, from the point of roasting business, and uh, I mentioned that we, we also do retail coffee by cup, where we have specialized equipments. Those equipments align with the principles of the brewing behaviors using the technology of the third wave. The third wave brewing technology is first of its kind because uh, we, we, we largely look at brewing traceable coffees. Traceable means that uh, all the baristas at the counter, they are trying to do so. It helps the consumer, both the consumer and also the, the coffee brewer who is a barrister to, to give a proper narrative on what exactly it means to, you know, to have that perfect cup of coffee brewed. Gerard is benefiting from his expertise as marketing and communication specialist to push this coffee business through the supply value chain. They are helping farmers right here from the grassroots level improve on quality. Now, as a, an entrepreneur who is attached to the coffee grow, growing uh, in Uganda as an origin, I'm making sure that uh, I cut across all the nation because I have to make sure that I get the best. And remember, I'm using uh, a certification program called Signature Coffees of Uganda, meaning I have must brew coffee right out from West Nile to Kigezi, from Kigezi to Eastern, Eastern to Central. You know, uh, and now, before that, because I've mapped out farmers who are doing what along the supply and value chain activities, so I know who is doing what. And besides that, uh, I recently signed up uh, an MOU with the two cooperatives. One is the Afghanan, Af Uganda Coffee Project Emanitelimba, which is going to be which supplies us with robusta raw material that we convert. And then we have another one in, in eastern Uganda, which is called Bweweswa, Coffee Cooperative. All combined, they make up close to uh, 258, 258 coffee farmers. So it's a huge consequence that is, uh, that is looked at as a, 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 an approach of creating a sustainable foundation of our enterprise. This collection center gets coffee from across the region. This is a very sensitive crop, especially if not handled well at the post-harvest stages. To ensure quality is maintained, Gerard invests in educating the farmers on managing quality. And how we do this? We, through the identified crops or individuals at smallholder farm gets uh, levels, we, we have uh, an education platform under Volcano Coffee that skills them on the post-harvest quality milling. Before the produce is purchased from these farmers, <coughs> we make sure that uh, we've, taken you, we've taken that farmer through a proper crop commodity management. We analyze it using our, our standardized moisture meters. 
that we've actually give, gone beyond to share with them or to, you know, to, to give them on a certain arrangement. Then they're able to produce a moisture content commodity that we really need, that we really need that is going to well align with our coffee roasting utility. Because we have a first of its kind, a good coffee roaster that has sensors. Our coffee roaster does not roast coffee be, uh, above 13 MC and does not go beyond below 9. So it, that's how it's calibrated. So quality management is top of our priority in the, in, along the supply and coffee value chain management. At Volcano Coffee Point, employment has been created for young people ranging from trained coffee baristas to farmers and this eventually contributes to the national revenues. By, by internal data we have so far created or oh, we have so far trained 1,200 1, coffee baristas impacts, talk of impacts and these coffee baristas, a few of them they, they, they are working here in Uganda because we do job placements because since we are into a roasting business we encounter a lot of customers outside so that uh, who are looking for a fresh roasted bean and we are the best in roasting so now the others are well uh, uh, are exported we don't, exp I'm not sorry to use the word export but they are taken abroad say for instance you is using a, a huge chunk of our baristas here so UA is one of them and luck, uh, good news that uh, we have also teamed up with Starbucks, a, a United States of America uh, coffee corporation that is, now tap, that is now willing to tap our trained coffee buyers in Uganda. So this is a mileage that we've created. We've so far uh, sent one coffee brewer in uh, Boston and you know she's, she's showing hope. She's telling me that uh, there's hope that we can still do better as a nation. So all these are interventions I'm trying to create. Now this outsourcing, yes, we outsource, but depending on uh, what kind, what level of the business we are going to engage to. We will go for a short commercial break, and when we return, what defines best coffee? Plus, don't miss a cup of cappuccino. Stay tuned. talk about job creation this is what we mean here at volcano coffee the youth are taking over we get a chance to be taken through these crucial stages of processing a cup of cappuccino had to definitely come in handy what this machine does is turning the raw material into a finished product so outside there you saw some ladies and gentlemen grading the coffee removing the defects and removing the bad beans so this roaster only roast good beans. The bad beans are put out and then we roast the good beans. So what's happening here is that we are roasting the green beans in order to grind them afterwards so that we can extract coffee out of it and then we make the, the cappuccinos, the lattes, the mochas and so on and so forth. So you may be wondering what I'm doing here. Here I'm testing for the flavors and aromas that are being developed in the coffee so that I ensure that when you pay for your when you pay for your one kg of coffee, it's worth the money. So right now my coffee is ready and I've made a medium dark roast and there it is. It is ready for consumption. So here this is the cooling tray. It's going to cool down. When the coffee comes from the drum it, it has a it has a very very high temperature so we need to cool it down as fast as possible. It cools up to around 60 degrees Celsius. So uh, after it cools down, we just remove it from the cooling tray and put it in the drum. So this is the stage where it goes and it enters the, the grinder. So when it is end to be roasted, we just put 
enough for here to be grinded. As you can see, this is the final product that we are going to use when we are preparing our coffee to our customers. This stage, it is the finest stage. Uh, uh, what we call uh, coffee in the cup. Now, this is a machine of uh, espresso machine. Yeah, the one which is brewing coffee from bean, uh, which was bean to grinding, then from the grinding to this machine. Now I'm starting to grinding. This is our grinder. After, after filling my, uh, my, uh, my potter filter, I, I will tamper. This is my tamper now. I used to, to press this coffee very well. After here, I'm coming to brewing now. Now I'm brewing. This is what they call espresso. If it's like this, it is espresso. Someone, uh, when I use this cup, it means I'm going to make cappuccino or uh, Americano and black coffee. After here, we are going to make cappuccino. Now this is our milk. This is a steam. Now I'm going to steam our milk. Yes, now our milk, now it is ready. Now that is cappuccino milk mixed with coffee. When we talk best coffee cup, in the language of coffee processing, this is what we mean. Also, it should be noted that coffee goes through different stages and each stage is equally important. Volcano Coffee is taking step to ensure adherence. A best coffee is a cup of coffee that scores above 87 plus. If you have a cup that scores 87 plus, that means that coffee is regarded as the best one. Cup score means like it has gone through a laboratory and we have taken, we have done analysis and then we have, you know, uh, uh, credited it. So that's, those are the kind of specialty and fine coffees actually we deal with. That's the actually the biggest challenge we have as a destination. Most of our coffee farmers, they lack capacity building to amplify best uh, farming, one, uh, management of the crop at the, you know, at the harvest level, two, at the roasting stage, three, at the milling, even at the brewing section. So what we are doing, we are sensitizing those who we are connected to, that look to have the perfect cup or the best cup as the area mentioned that scores 87. These are a, you must practice A, B, C. A, B, C. I mean like well, harvest the red cherry. Well, that's one. Two, make sure where you're storing it. If the moisture content is is you know is gazetted. It's a room temperature, and you need you know uh, it's, it should be a regulated room so that has no uh, a aeration that can uh, can incorporate in you know. Uh, uh, spice, spice, uh, ob objective, uh, spice issues like you know, you know uh, these odors. Then thirdly, uh, we tell these farmers that you know uh, regroup. When you regroup, you and you you work as a as a team or as a group, you're able to be you know to gain more in in, in product uh, uh, product knowledge. So that's how we are trying to sensitize our farmers to make sure that they come up with the best. More so, we encourage them to add value. When they add value. The product fetches more, more money. Coffee is the third most consumed commodity on the planet Earth next to water and oil. In Uganda, coffee consumption has increased over the years to about 7% and still counting. This has informed the increased demand, the market cuts across and Uganda is steadily tapping into the international market as well. But this has not come without challenges, of course. Uh, the consumption is actually changing from the previous 10 years back because I've seen, you know, talking of 10 years back, 
the consumption level was at 1%. So uh, with the, this kind of uh, conversation that you keep on sharing, and then the, inter uh, the coming in of UCDA you know, uh, to Uganda Coffee Development Authority to encourage you know, players like us to add value, to educate the masses, it's now improving. At, uh, as I say, as I speak now, we are at uh, 7%, which is not bad. And I hope if we keep on this conversation rolling over time, we are likely to go to 12% in the next five years from now. So, which is a good gesture. And it, you know, it creates hope among the, both the farmers, the actors, and, you know, uh, yeah, and everyone actually who is involved along the supply and value chain of coffee. Where is the market? Now, after water, we have, we have oil. And then after oil, here comes others, it is including coffee. Coffee is uh, traded globally at uh, you know, conventional arrangement. It's a one-on-one -on -one transaction, let me say. And then, uh, and then uh, for the local consumption, the market is still as virgin as I can tell. Because I'm a player, I know what's, what's, where it's hot and where it's not hot. And I know who's consuming what. However, for the local consumption, there are still gaps, of course, on quality. Now we need to go deep into quality issues and then sort the issues from the farm gate. That's where the, uh, the problems are coming from. Then once we, the quality is improved, you, every garden will have to consume what? Then the brewing behaviors, roasting behaviors, all these are contrib contribute to the, the, uh, the market needs. Then for the, for, the, uh, for the international markets, of course, these are the markets that are specialized and looking for the raw material. So the, there are endless you know, opportunities at the global stage. Then the question is, how prepared as a nation, Uganda, or as a coffee origin, to tap into these markets? One, we need to go back to the drawing board and now craft up principles that can be able to, to help us really have a negotiation uh, desk. Because uh, as an origin, I believe we need to create stories, multiple stories. Because, I mean, we are a nation that produces two species. One is Arabica and two, and Robusta. All these are stories that you can build on and make Uganda a very perfect coffee destination. There is still quite a number of challenges in the supply chain of coffee production. But these only strengthen the stakeholders to continue pushing for better results. Lack of sustainable programs at the origins is one of the hindrances that are really, or is one of the challenges that affects, you know, uh, uh, especially the young or the young startup startups in Uganda in coffee so three are of course coffee is not uh, a commodity for the cheap uh, for the cheap people or for the poor people it's a commodity that is so expensive it's a commodity that needs a, a huge investment uh, working capital to inject in so that you can be able to have a well uh, leveled ground and when we talk of quality of course we need to you need to invest in you know equipment other challenges, of course, are associated with the, yeah, the, at the consumption level because we don't have, uh, uh, you know, full-fledged uh, coffee academies. That they, The ones we have, well, they are trying because they're exposing, they're exposing this. How about if we look into different angles and then see how can, you know, collectively uh, set ourselves into that direction and then uh, begin you know, confronting these challenges together. So you find XY is holding a, a coffee academy, XY is holding a coffee shop, but what is in that coffee shop? Gerard prides in making a difference and training baristas that have since competed at an international level and much more. For me, uh, a lot of, uh, well, first of all, I've achieved a lot. Right now, I'm consuming a very perfect brewed cup of coffee, which is one of the greatest achievements for me. Two. Uh, as an, a social entrepreneur, I've seen, I've changed so many people's lives, especially the young people and women uh, along the supply of coffee chains. So that's an achievement. To be one of the first coffee barristers uh, turned into an entrepreneur to, to, to import a coffee roaster that aligns well with the third wave brewing technology globally. So it's an achievement. <laughs> Gerard, as a young entrepreneur that believes in humble beginnings, has this to share with young people out there who would love to venture into agriculture, especially coffee production. One word for Ugandan youth out there. Stay with hope. D discover yourself. 
and if you can please join the coffee sector because there are so there are massive opportunities because I'm talking this from the point of experience I've met several youth who are now getting actually into the value chain especially at the value addition point and you know they are selling because you know they have an advantage of the technology social media whatsapp you know they share they you know so I I keep encountering them and then I also give I, I mentor them because I'm part you know I'm in the same age bracket so it's coffee that can help you where, wherever you are. Please tap the story and then let's have it amplified for the better.